All right. So guys, hopefully we respect your time. We should get in and out of here as quick as possible with this stuff. We're gonna try and cover the program of like the overview of everything. We'll go through questions because I think that's really what I want to cover most is like get into the questions you guys have specifically. And outside of that, I'm sure there's gonna be some tangents and some rants, but hopefully we're out of here by like 45 after or somewhere in that range. So what I want to say first before we even get started, this is the second meeting. We had one on Thursday already. I don't know if that's straight or not, but I'll let you know. So on Tuesday, I'm sorry. So we have one, today's Thursday, right? Gosh, all these days from the beginning. So we have one of these on Tuesday. And the biggest thing that we want to explain up front, especially for new people, is don't get overwhelmed. It's a lot of information in one place. And for somebody who's very advanced, they're like, oh, this is perfect. I understand all of this. And somebody who's beginner looks at it and they're like, what language is this? Okay. So I don't want to hit you too. <laughs> so, and some people, even with advanced experience, sometimes it's going to be a little bit more advanced or what they're used to. So the key thing is, is like, we are going to bite off portions today. So the biggest thing I use is like the, the lesson or the takeaway on Tuesday is we want to break everything into bite-sized portions and what we can handle and what we can kind of digest at first. I'm using a food metaphor, but I'm talking about exercise, okay? So really what we're looking at is like, you're only going to break off the portions that you feel comfortable with implementing right away, and then next week you'll find add a little more, and the third week we'll add a little more. And the cool thing with this, or the awful part with this, is a lot of times people will see a three-week deadline in a three-week program, and what happens on day 22? They stop. They stop. <laughs> So if this is a three week crash for some people, you're probably in the wrong spot because while you're going to see results in three weeks, you'll gain back more on the fourth week than you lost through three weeks anyway, if this is only supposed to be a short term fix. So what this is supposed to be, like when you're building a house, what do you have to start with? Foundation. Foundation. Then you build up and you build up and you build up. Ooh, let's check. Ashley, what did we build in our staff meeting on the whiteboard the other day? A cake. A cake, all right? Oh, yeah. You have to have the biggest layer, then the next, and the next. You can't start with a small layer on the bottom and then build a bigger layer and a bigger layer. Unless you're dumb. Unless you're what? Unless you're dumb. He, and, knows, he knows how to make cake. Oh, I, know, I was going to say, I don't know how to do that. So the whole idea is like we're going to start with our foundational program first, and we're going to build upon it and build upon it. So while you might be at a level five, if this was a video game and some people are level nine, you might be at that first level and today is day one. Today might be the warm up and you're like, you need to come to my work and have everybody go through the warm up so they can die. That's what she just told me just a second ago. So she's from Mirrors Plumbing. We've been doing some nutrition coaching with them and they think they're exercising, right? But, oh, they're ridiculous with it. They're ridiculous. Yeah. She just did the warm up and she's like, oh my gosh, like that was something else. So everybody's going to be at a different spot and that's the key thing I want everybody to start with is when I'm saying an example, if it goes right over your head, Either A, raise your hand and ask a question, B, I'll see your eyes look a little glossy eyed, or C, don't worry about it because it's out of like the range of where you need to worry about or the scope that you need to worry about in the beginning. We're cool with that, that's where we can start with. Awesome. So are you Jen? Because you're with Leslie? Put it together. So we have two Jens here. And she your guck Towskis or something, right? Wow. That's awesome. I was thinking that's who you were. But Guys, I just see names come through and I have no clue who they are until I meet them. Maureen's name, I told her, I'm like, you're lowercase, I had to rewrite your name, that's how I remembered yours. But like, guys, there's some way of like how we have to remember everybody's name in this building. So even with the trainers, like if they don't remember your name after that second time, you just go like this and we have to run a lap if we don't remember your name. So you hold us to it and we will remember your names, okay? So, we're going to start off with the nutrition components, well, I'm sorry, with the exercise components. I want everybody to flip to three, page three, so all the way back to that chart. So, where we're gonna start off with this is, I wanna look at the very first day. So when we look at the very first day up in that top left hand column where it says, workout number one. You're gonna see right below that where it says, day one with a dash, day six with a dash, day 11 with a dash. Notice that it does not say Monday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, there's no day on it, okay? So the way this is going to work, if you start this next Monday, that's day one, put the check next to it, okay? If you take off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and you start back on Sunday, you can't just start on day eight. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's day two on Sunday or whenever you come back to this plan, okay? So don't think by skipping days you skip workouts. Is that cool? So your 21-day plan might last you 35 days or 65 days, depending on your commitment level. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So the next part is, when you go down, you're gonna see the exercises and you're gonna see 20-50, okay? 
okay? So what that is is total repetitions. So if you see 20 on the left-hand side, that's gonna be the beginner reps. If you see 50 on the right-hand side, that's going to be the advanced repetitions, okay? The second part of that is if there is a right and a left, so like bicycle crunches, there's two sides, it's half and half. The total number is what's written. So if you see 20, 10 on this half of my body, 10 on this half of my body. So the first exercise, you're going straight leg kickbacks. It's 10 on this side, 10 on this side, or 25 and 25. Does that make sense? Cool. So when we're going down and we look at that, when you go to the very bottom right, you're gonna look over where it says beginner sets per workout. So when you're looking at this, you see week one, it says one X, that's one time. So what day one's workout would be, would be 20 kickbacks, 10 right, 10 left, your seated knee-ins, 10 right, 10 left, your Spider-Man planks, 10 right, 10 left, and then your wacky jacks or your jumping jacks. That's gonna take four minutes, three minutes, two minutes. Like that's it, okay? It doesn't take very long to do that one round, one time, the beginner reps. But what we wanna start with is this. What is the hardest thing to do or hardest thing to begin? First rep. First rep. So once you're like, oh, I'm gonna do this beginner one, and you finish this, and it's three minutes later, and you kinda got your heart rate up, then you're like, well, I'm a freaking slacker if I stop now. <laughs> so then you're gonna end up doing a second, and a third, and a fourth, or whatever it happens to be. So what I want you to do is, this is your framework. This is your foundation, okay? So even if you're a beginner, and you do one time through, and you're like, perfect, done, that's what he said to do, I'm out of here, and you go on with your day at work, great, okay? Don't overthink it, don't feel guilty about anything, like, you are a beginner. You're going to improve, and you're going to improve. Where we're going to advance on this is as you see week two, it increases, and week three, it increases. But if you got to the end of week one and you were already doing it two times through and you're like, this is easy, well then when you get to week two, either jump ahead and do it a third time so you'll do week threes or start incorporating the advanced repetitions, okay? So if 20 becomes easy after week one, jump it up to 50, but maybe you'll still follow the beginner portion of how many times to do it. Did I lose anyone? So you might increase the reps, but keep the sets the same, okay? So this is the first way to do it. I put this as like beginners, or anybody who's here as a boot camp client, this is going to be your warm up starting next Monday. You'll run through it one time, advanced people, you'll run through two times or three times, depending on what your ability level is on that, all right? So that's it, that's your day done, all right? Now, if you're trying to use this as a workout, so if you're not just doing this as trying to strengthen your core, if you're not just doing this to try and work on your low back and tighten it up, and if you're not just doing this to just start to incorporate exercise, but you're actually trying to make a little bit of headway in these next three weeks, then we're gonna turn this program here into a workout, okay? With the workout, what I mean with this is you're gonna add a little bit of cardio, either front end or back end. So you're either going to go front end, cardio, or back end cardio, and I'll explain what that means. So, when you're looking at it this way, how we're going to look at this is cardio for where is April? How many laps did you do? When? Today. Today I did six. At when? In the afternoon. The back end of your workout because you're giggling at this. I'm going to make you say it. Go ahead. So you did six laps. Six laps for somebody beginning, that might be way too many. That might be exhausting, okay? But how that would work is like you would do your as written workout and then you would end with a little bit of cardio. So if you're doing this at home, you look down the street and you're like, yeah, that neighbor's mailbox seems pretty far away. You walk to it, you jog to it, you slog, slow jog, however it is, and you get to that. Jog it back. That's your workout for the day. You did your one time through, you went five mailboxes down, and that's it. Day two, when you look at that, when you look at this and you're going through, you're like, that neighbor's mailbox was easy, and you go one further. Day, day three, you go further. Day four, you go further. And by day 21, or day however long it takes you to go through this, you're now half mile away from your house, you're however far away, and you've now started to increase that, okay? So the two different ways to do this is, doing it in front of your workout is obviously gonna make these exercises more difficult. So if you are not very versed at these exercises, I would do the exercises first, then go for your walk or your jog or whatever second. That's where you do it at the end of your workout. Okay? If you are skilled with these exercises, these are a little bit easier for you, or maybe you don't have a green band at home to make the difficulty level harder, you can make it more difficult by doing your cardio first, then doing your exercises. Why? Your heart rate up. Your 
you're tired already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So your heart rate's up already, and then you start doing the exercises. So when you look at this, like this is not a full workout by itself. This is a target specific. This is a fine tuning. This is like sculpting a little bit of clay. This is like a touch up, mop up job. You're going to turn it into the workout by what you combine along with it. Okay. So if you're looking for the big time transformation over the next three weeks, then I call it this way. Look at. So what would that mean? Cardio beginning and end. Okay. So you look at that neighbor's mailbox, you're like, damn, that's pretty far. Run to it, come back. You might run to it and walk back. Cool. You go through your one round, you're like, I can do that again. You do a second round through, you're like, no, I'm gonna go to the neighbor's mailbox. And then you run, and that's how you finish your workout. And same thing, you might have to jog back or whatever your speed is, but that becomes now your workout. Okay? So you took this three, four minute exercise. You added four to five minutes on the front end, you added four to five minutes on the back end, and now you just created a 15 minute workout. When you get to week two and you start doing that two times through, and you get to week three and doing it three times through, or for the advanced where you're doing it five and seven times through, that's now a 20 minute, 30 minute, 40 minute workout. Okay? Do we see how this grows? Cool. So the whole idea is you want to start with the foundation, start at beginner level, start at week one, get your first rep done because the first rep is always the hardest, then you add on from there. Okay? Does that make sense so far with that? Cool. Let's go down to day five. Those numbers don't look real. <laughs> very real, guys. All right. So day five, very simple. So when I say very simple, <laughs> it's not a typo, guys. It's not a typo at all. All right. So when you're going through, guys, these are the exercises that are more of like high repetition. I mean, a jumping jack. A hundred of those is way different from a hundred sit-ups, guys. A hundred jumping jacks you get done in 50 seconds, 45 seconds, something like that. A hundred sit-ups is five minutes or maybe never. So it just depends on ability. So when you're looking at these like jumping jacks and the plank toe taps and the Russian twists and some of these things, you're doing these with no weight, very little resistance, and you are just going through those motions. So like the Russian twist side to side, what's going to happen when you do this 300 times? It becomes cardio, your abs are tight. So even with no weight, you're exhausted, you're fried, okay? But the cool thing is, is you're not using any additional resistance. So while you're using maybe additional resistance, or maybe using a band, you're using three and four and five rounds of these exercises all through here through the week, when you get to these, you're doing it one time, and you're doing it straight on through. So you might do 50. You're like, wow, it was rough. You sit there for 30 seconds, then you need another 30 seconds, and you're like, all right, I'm gonna go again, I'm gonna get 50. And you only make it to 30, and then you sit there, and you recover. Give yourself a few seconds, and you go back, so that 300 reps, even at that beginner level, might take you 10 minutes, might take you 15 minutes. And after your first like go through, you're like, oh, I'm gonna get this done in two minutes. And then they get harder and harder and harder. So the whole idea is this is going to be kind of like your endurance type muscle, sorry, your endurance type muscle here. This is going to be your strength training on these other days here, because again, we're going to do multiple sets. We're on this one, we're doing high reps and we're just blasting it out, okay? Any questions as far as exercises? I had smiles until we got to the last part. So, so when you get to workout What's number five, you're not doing the multiplier each, each time? So when she goes through, when she says like the multiplier, you're not doing anything here as far as on the workout five, that's going to really be up to you. So I say it this way. When you're picking on day five, pick one. Pick one. So it might be Russian twists, might be jumping jacks, might be plank toe taps, might be any of those. It is just pick one. Pick one. It's not all of them. Pick one. But when you finish one, what's going to end up happening? You're going to want to do another one. And it's so weird to say that because, like, especially like somebody new to this, they're like, yeah, right, I'm never going to want to do another one. But the hardest part is to, like, when you start. <coughs> Starting is the hardest part. Putting on the clothes, getting your ass on the ground, getting a towel out. It's so much a mental struggle. Like, Shelly and I were supposed to work out at 10 today. We finally did our first set around 11.15. You delay stuff, guys. Like, the stuff you don't want to do, you delay. And especially when you're doing it at home, you don't have a workout time, you have to be here by the clock starting at this time. It's very easy to talk yourself out of it or delay things. So you just have to start. Once I started though, we were done, she had to go to a point, I kept working out, like it was one of those things like, wow, I already got started, I feel good, and you keep going. So on day five, you're gonna start with one, and you can add as many as you wanna do. So when it says to times one, times seven, times whatever, you're not following that on day five. And look through the book, because it explains, I believe, a little bit further on that on the, web, on the video, I mean, I'm sorry. Yes? Plank toe taps. So you can either do this from your hands, or you can do this from your elbows. If you're doing it from your elbows, your butt goes up a little bit because you come here, come here, 
come here. If you're going from hands, it's a little bit easier because it's coming here, side to side. And obviously your hands are on the ground, you're not holding a marker or anything either. But yeah, so on that, out of those exercises, I think they're kind of in order from hardest to easiest, I'd say. Because I think the Russian twists add up a lot. Which ones? Spider Man, do you think are the toughest on that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Top is toughest, easiest to the bottom. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a, it's. Uh, yeah. Bicycle crunch is just your legs fry. That's the tough one on that one. Does this make sense, guys? Use the support page. Ask questions. Like, there's gonna be stuff that we come across. Same thing like when we just did the game of shreds. You know, we we're planning this six weeks in advance before even a body gets on the ground and does a single exercise. So sometimes things are awesome on paper. They make all sorts of sense, and then we start putting them in place, and it's like, oh no, like this is what you should really be doing. All right. So if there's something that doesn't make sense, just ask questions. Like, we all make mistakes. I probably made a mistake on something here at some point. So like, make sure you're asking, and then other people in the group can also offer suggestions of how they're tackling the sheet as well. Okay? Quick recap. Your days. You don't skip them because you skipped a workout. The goal is to do 21 days in 21 days if we can, but your goal is to get the 21 days condensed to as short of a period as possible. Let's make it no longer than, let's say, maybe 35 days. But if we can get it quicker than that, that'd be a lot better. All right, so check off your days as you do them. Go in order, follow in order. Your repetitions or your sets, I'm sorry, you'll increase week by week. If you start and it's easy, increase the reps. If you're still easy, increase the sets. Cool? Let's look to page one. All right, so with this one, nutrition is a situation to where there are so many different ways to go about it. You can count calories, there's keto, there's low carb, there's Weight Watchers, there's anything that you can think of in the world. Every single one works. How long are you willing to stick to it? That's your answer. Like there's no secret. Like Leslie, how strict have you dieted? Now it's a lifestyle, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't diet. You don't diet anymore. So if you feel like you are restricting yourself massively, you will quit. So don't restrict yourself massively. You want to start, if you are a beginner, I'm going to put this here in a second, but if you're a beginner, you need to pick like two things out of these eight ground rules and work on that for week one. If at the end of week one, you still haven't gotten those two things down, whatever the two things that you pick, stick with those two again for week two. This is a foundation again, guys. We're building the cake. When we really look at the cake, the foundation is really your nutrition. So if we're building the cake of fitness here, we eat every single day. We don't always work out. Every single day of your life, you're gonna eat one time, three times, five times, eight times, maybe more. You're not gonna work out every day, okay? So this, even though it has the most important, this is almost what you almost need to start the slowest and ramp up progressively. Anybody can commit themselves to a workout, kick their butts a little bit, cool, you feel great, but then you fuel yourself with bad food in the body, you just offset everything you just did, okay? There's no out training a bad diet, okay? But the problem is everybody surrounds their emotion with this, nobody puts emotion into this, all right? You either do it or you don't. This, we have a bad day, we need our food, all right? <laughs> it's a weekend, we need our food. So this is where we, we put so much stuff from childhood, from relationships, from work, from traffic, from Duncan and McDonald's have their signs on the side of the road. Like, this is all the temptation. This is willpower right here. So, oops. So this is a situation where this, like, you have to self-talk to get started, but once you get going, your body will kind of take it through. This, every meal, every day, every single time that you put food in your mouth, you have to make a conscious decision. So instead of starting with this massive list of eight rules that we need to follow, pick two. Pick the two that you think can make the biggest difference and that won't be too much of a restriction on you and master those for the first week. If you still don't have it, master them the second week. And you just keep adding on, adding on, adding on. So this is how we wrote it out on Tuesday. If you're a beginner, pick two. If you're advanced, pick four. And if you are in that ninja, which is just a fancy stupid name that we came up with, pick eight. So when you're looking at this, the idea, obviously, is we want to get a lot of vegetables in our body because it's healthy. Cool. We want to eat fruits because it's a good energy source. Cool. Proteins help supply all the living fuel in our body. Cool. Water keeps us, you know, uh, I was going to say moisturized, hydrated. 
cool. All these things are great, but again, what's going to be the biggest mover for you? If Lindsay said, I eat two salads every single day and that's the one of the things she picks is I'm gonna eat salad every day, she didn't make a difference. She didn't change anything. She just kept doing what she's doing. But if she's one of the people that put sugar in her coffee every single morning and she's like, sugar's gonna be what I choose as one of my things, that's gonna be the biggest lever to move the door, okay? When I say that, the lever thing, I just wanna kinda of put a perspective on it. There's the same size lever on every single door basement you see. Some move really big freaking doors, some move little closet doors. Same size lever on it. So even though some of the things are gonna be just as much of a mental effort to do, sometimes you're not gonna get the outcome as big if you're just choosing something easy. So like sugar would be a great thing to choose. If you're somebody who eats pasta, potato, bread, rice, every single meal all throughout, it might be the thing you wanna choose that's gonna move the biggest door, but if it's gonna cause the biggest emotion and like anxiety, that might be the, something to start on week two. Does that make sense? Not losing you guys with that? So the whole idea is like, you're in this for the long term for the rest of your life. I mean, yes, it's three weeks, and yes, it's called Ab Assault, but again, if we didn't put a fancy name and a deadline, nobody would ever sign up for anything, guys. Like, it's, I hate the name. We called it Ab Assault the first like promotion. I'm like, I hate the name Assault, but I had to keep writing it over and over. I'm like, this sucks. So as you saw, I started putting like, restore your core and things like that, but <laughs> guys, it's just a name. Like, again, if we didn't give it a name, nobody ever signs up for anything. If we were like, guys, we're gonna do ab exercise and eat clean for three weeks, show up on Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday night. <laughs> 132 people got suckered into ab assault and clicked on it and filled it out, all right? It's fancy, it's flashy, it sounds cool, and it has a deadline. Guys, if I say the rest of your life ab plan, no one's signing up. We look at that because we're like, oh, I can bite that off. It's 21 days, I can make a change, when most of you three days from now, you're gonna fall off track anyway, all right? So stop getting so overwhelmed by things. Implement the things that are going to make the biggest changes, but if it causes anxiety, pick one of the other things on the list, master that first, and then we'll attach starches next to Okay, does that help at least answer some of that? Cause well, I, I haven't been having any pasta, rice, I cut out the while, rice, yeah. I cut out the rice cakes. So I'm just curious if there's anything other than black beans or oh. red kidney beans or chickpeas that I can have I love that. Yeah. as that starch. So we'll get into that when we get into questions. That's a perfect, yeah. So like, <laughs> if you're already, already doing that, her, she, that should not be one of her things she picks. Like if you already have not been eating pasta, potato, bread, rice, okay. that's not one of your things. You're already doing it. It's not going to make a and difference. And I'm already loading up on the vegetables. It's just I'm tired of having beans with the vegetables every single day. Sounds like you shouldn't do it anymore. But <sighs> so you, you get the idea, right? So if it's a situation like Leslie's like, oh, I'm going to cut out soda, and she doesn't drink soda, Leslie, that's a bad thing to cut out. Like, you know? But if she's like, I need to cut out my ice cream bars, and we're like, yes, Leslie, win. You weren't here on Tuesday. I had to use your name without you even being here. You're my perfect example always. So let's go through. Jordan, read number one for me. What is it on the list? Eliminate all starches. Eliminate all starches. <gasps> okay, so eliminate all starches. All I'm looking for in that is if it starts or has the word pasta, potato, bread, rice in it. Okay, sweet potato, red potato, brown rice. What if it uses those words in it, guys? It's one of those things. Okay. French fries does not have either of those words. That's a free food. <laughs> so. There are going to be derivatives of different things. So when you're looking at some of the other things of like, you know, quinoa, of uh, farro, of uh, some of those different things, like guys, that's a starch, it's going to fall into that. So if you're trying, if you have to, if you have to ask, it's a no. Like it's like, I don't know how else to say it. It's like, mom, can I have an extra bar of ice cream? It's a no, all right? So if you have to like try and rationalize it, it's probably a no, but how do you know for sure if it's a food that you can eat or not? Ask, ask. how do you ask? Text Derek, anytime. Guys, if you text me, like, we're quick. If you put on the support page, it might be a little slower, but the other cool thing about the support page is you're gonna get answers from everybody else, too. So while I might tell the same answer over and over again, of black beans, red beans, hummus, whatever, she's like, I'm tired of eating that stuff. So that's where we need input from Dan or from Destiny or from somebody, like, what have you been doing in those situations? I'm boring, I'll eat the same thing over and over. So also, if you're looking for a different answer, you might sometimes have to ask the question to a different person, but always ask, okay? Number two, Melody, what do we have? Have two servings of fruit per day. Two servings of fruit per day. So when we're looking at fruit, fruit is energy in this situation. So if we're taking away those starchy carbs and those feel-good comfort carbs, fruit is going to have to be put in at the right time of day to make sure that you still keep that blood sugar going and you still have some good energy. So when your activity is highest is when you need to eat the fruit. So if you are somebody that's very, very busy in the morning, that's where something in the morning is going to be a great option. If you also work out in the afternoons, that's where 2.30, 3 o'clock might be the other good time to have that fruit, okay? 
what about if you're not busy at all? What do we do? Don't eat fruit. Don't eat fruit. Does she do we agree? Um, well, don't win. You definitely would. So we got no, we got definitely. Eat it earlier in the day. Do we like that answer? Yes. I like that answer. Cool. So eat it earlier in the day. If you eat something at 3 o'clock, yes, fruit has sugar, but it's not the same as white table sugar. So if you eat it at 3 o'clock as opposed to 9 o'clock, you have a lot more time to burn it off. And yes, you might not be exercise active, but you're still active. You're still doing things. Okay? Number three, what do we got? Um, your primary focus is non-starchy vegetables. Cool. Primary focus is non-starchy vegetables. So when you're talking about beans and going through something like that, we can also go into everything from like cucumbers and celery and carrots and any type of lettuce and leaf. Um, it can be anything, all your peppers. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just on the bean side on that. Any type of vegetables are going to be okay. Now, when I say that, am I saying be a vegetarian and don't eat anything else? No. no. So when you're looking at a plate, here's the easiest way to look at it. If you have your meat going here, that's a T-bone steak, say normally your potato would be that much and then the rest is your We'll call this broccoli. What other vegetable can I draw that doesn't look ridiculous? Cauliflower. cauliflower it's the same thing. I love it. You got a cauliflower? Brussels sprouts. A couple of straight lines for asparagus. You have Brussels sprouts. You can even make them green beans. Cool. I don't know. So when you're looking at this, it's really you're just looking at the sense of like cut your plate in half, and as long as you have something along those lines, it's good. Okay? But that could also be a salad. That could also be stir fry. That could also be a stuffed pepper, but you're using cauliflower rice. It could be a lot of different things. So don't think that you just have to be a boring person of eating rabbit food all day long, okay? It doesn't have to be raw vegetable, just nonstop. What if that's a soup? Great. What if it's a wok? Don't overthink it, guys. So there's so many things you can do, but again, we get so used to our comforts and we get so used to what we know, and that's why we fall off track in four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, because we get home, nothing's cooked, nothing's prepped, we don't have any ideas of anything, and what do we know? We know what we like. And so that's what we make, and the next night you're like, oh, I blew it last night, well, let's just do it tonight and I'll get back on track tomorrow. And then it happens on Wednesday, and then you're already like, I'm gonna start back next Monday. So now you're four days later, and you're over here by Amanda. But you see where it happens, guys? So don't overthink it because you're getting bored with what you're choosing. Go out of your comfort zone a little bit. Go to a Chipotle for a day. Order all the vegetarian things and still order the meat, still order the beans. Get the guacamole, and then look at this and say, what of this can I make at home? Cool. Go to a Thai restaurant the next day. Order stuff. Say, what's going to have rice in it? What can I have instead of rice? They might come up with something else that you can do. Look at your plate. Say, can I make this? Try something. But there's so many things that you can eat, but because we're not used to it and it's not our comfort, we don't make it. All right? Buffalo chicken dip from Publix with the celery stalks, <laughs> amazing. You can do ranch dip, but using Greek yogurt to make it, and you can use like the carrot chips, the cucumber chips, any of the stuff that we use in the other uh, challenge. It tastes awesome. You taste like you're getting a fat sour cream dip, but you're not. Okay, you just use Greek yogurt with the Hidden Valley Ranch packet. Same kind of consistency, same everything, but 25 grams of protein compared to 25 grams of fat. Healthier option. So number four. Number four is your secondary focus is lean protein. Cool. So we're looking at this. Again, your salad bowl, if it's a you know lettuce, salad, whatever we got in here, there still needs to be some sort of chicken in with that salad. If we turn that into a soup, there still needs to be some sort of protein source in it. If we're not actually eating the meat, what else can we do? Protein shakes. What else can we do? Beans. <laughs> I love it. We're going to keep going back to beans. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to pretend beans don't exist today. Protein bar. Protein bar, cool. Peanut butter. What type of protein bar? Uh, I do the Quest. I what does everybody like? Let's go over that real quick. What part of protein bars? Quest. One bar. You still do one bars? I, we've been doing actually um, big thin. These guys are like four bars for five dollars or something like that at Walmart, and they're 20 grams of protein. They're I think one net carb. They're really good to think thin, and we just found them on Amazon for a bigger size box and more flavors too. So if you never try to think thin, they're really, really, really good. <laughs> what am I getting to look for? Amazon. Oh, don't order Amazon if you <laughs> want to support your post office. Yeah. Hi, bye.
have this gym from Amazon. You, you, you love this place, so it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. All right, so when you're looking at that stuff, protein is gonna be emphasis, but say for instance, you are taking your fruit and you wanna do it into a frozen fruit smoothie in the morning, okay? Obviously protein powder can go in it, but what's something else that we can add into it that's gonna add more protein? Yogurt. Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt. And so just add in Greek yogurt, get the old school ice cube trays, go to the Dollar Tree across the street, fill up the Greek yogurt, or fill up the uh, cubes with Greek yogurt and freeze it. You now have individual Greek yogurt cubes that when you're making your smoothie, drop one or two of them in there, and you're gonna add an extra five to 10 grams of protein, makes it creamier, makes it yummier, and then you have a winning, uh, winning formula, okay? So protein can always be added somehow, some way. Your snacks in between meals, what if it's just beef jerky? Cool. We talked about the chicken dip already. We talked about the other different options. Cheese, cheese with the lunch meat roll up with the pickle inside of it and roll it up. If it wasn't for Leslie, I would have never discovered that, but that's almost every night when I leave here now, I go home, we do a piece of cheese, I do some lunch meat, roll it up in it with a pickle. It's delicious. Crunch, salty, sweet, whatever. It's very, very good. So there's so many things you can do, but don't get overwhelmed when you see protein, just think, chicken breast again? <laughs> that's your fault. All right? I don't eat eggs. I never eat eggs unless I'm going to a diner because they cook it in grease, but I don't eat eggs. But some people look at it and they're like, protein? I'm so tired of eggs. I never eat an egg. I don't eat fish. I, I don't eat a lot of things. So like, I am very simple with what I do, but like, you still need to look outside the box if you start getting bored. Because again, it's the rest of your life, not just three weeks. Eggs yep. don't freeze very well. No. Eggs aren't going to freeze. No, One they're very tough. We made this meal with uh, spinach rice i want to say it was rice spinach and chicken and then the eggs they get crumbled and the eggs just i mean they didn't do very well in the freezer once the moisture gets into them it's very very tough yeah so I, we learned I, not to do that until after we were done when we were ready to eat it just cook the eggs does anybody them. i have no advice for that does anybody freeze eggs or mass cook with eggs i'm the wrong person like if a hard boiled egg is cooked around me, you I'm like, that oh, myself. Yeah, <laughs> that smell of vomity, whatever, is just awful. <laughs> that sulfur is, <laughs> yeah, do it. That's just me. Some people love it. I mean, my, my wife will eat them warm, like, and it's, yeah. I, I can't watch it. I love eggs. What's yeah, number five? You love eggs? Oh, yeah. And see, unless they're cooked in grease at a diner, at least two a day I eat. You like them or you don't like them? I yeah, see, that's amazing. Yeah, me too. It's, we get three built delivered, and, it, and, and we get a meal delivery for me, we get one for her, and most of the time I end up eating her meals because that's, I mean, she loves eggs. She eats eggs for like most meals, but again, it's just not me, and I hate the smell of it. What's number five? We will go with Maureen. I almost forgot your name, Maureen. Your third focus is healthy, healthy fats. Healthy fats. So what is a healthy fat, guys? Let's just go ahead and call it out. What we got? Avocado. Avocado. Avocado, you said? Peanut butter. Pe well, no, you said cheese. She said peanut butter. Nuts. Nuts. Cheese, peanut butter, nuts. nuts. What else? Coconut oil. Coconut oil. What else? Guys, does everybody in here like magic shell? Like the stuff yeah. you put on, it freezes and gets real hard? What is that, you know? It's, it's coconut oil. Coconut oil at room temperature is solid. When it gets cold, it's hard. So you can make your own magic shell. So say for instance, your meal is strawberry, or not your meal, but your snack, your fruit is strawberries. You take them the night before, slice them all up so you get more portions out of it. In a little bowl, take coconut oil. You're gonna have to microwave it a little bit just so you can get it so you can mix. Add some cocoa powder. If you have an artificial sweetener that you like, whether it's super low stevia, Splenda, monk fruit, whatever it is, add some of that, or you can just keep it with the bitter. Mix it up until you get the right consistency and the right taste. Like just keep tasting it as you add a little bit more cocoa powder. Once you get that good, drizzle it over top of all your fruit. Like obviously you can put on parchment paper, drizzle it over top, put that in the freezer for even just five minutes, and you will have like a magic shell over all your strawberry slices and it'll stay hard just in the refrigerator. So then you can pick them all up, put them inside of a little Ziploc bag or individual little zip, um, Tupperwares, put it in there, the next day you have your snack that you can pull out and have magic shell, which is a healthy fat with fruit and there's nothing bad in it. That sounds pretty cool, right? So fats don't have to be shitty, all right? <laughs> Avocado can become your butter. You can actually just mash them up, you can put that over anything that you would normally put butter onto. There are so many other things that you can do with fats, so don't get stuck in just the peanut butter mode. I think, again, they listen to me very much, so I can tell already, I do a lot of beans, I do a lot of peanut butter. So like, they're talking my language, but like, if you've implemented your own ways of doing it, that's where you need to give that input back, okay? So avocado, doing cheese, doing some of those other things, like guys, that's an awesome, awesome choice. Kathleen, what's the next one? Number six, are we on? Yes. Eat at home whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Eat at home whenever possible. So why would that matter, guys? Because you know what you're picking. Because you know exactly what so you're eating. So you don't eating. pick the wrong poison when you're so out. So you know what you're eating, so you don't pick the poison, so you know what you're eating. Now, when is eating at a restaurant beneficial? 
Think outside the box. When you are with family or some kind of event where you can't avoid eating When you're out. with family or an event where you can't avoid it, what else? When is eating at a restaurant beneficial? What if you have no other choice? What if you are out? What if you work on the road? What if you are traveling with kids at a soccer sport because these kids have to drive around everywhere for their soccer sports now? What if you are away? What if you are at a husband's work event? What if you are at a daughter's recital? What if you are at whatever it is, guys? So eating at restaurants isn't going to be 100% avoidable all the time. But the one thing that you can do is you can make the, re the meals at the restaurants, one, more cost effective, two, more protein packed, and three, still fit into your diet. So here's the way we look at it. When you order at a restaurant, when you go in and let's just call it like a chicken salad, when you go into Wendy's, how much does it cost about? Eight bucks, yeah, sure. When you go into, let's call it Applebee's, how much does it cost? $12. Twelve bucks. When you go to Longhorn Parabas, how much does it cost? 17, 18 bucks, whatever. Is it the same salad, same meat, same everything? It is. The cost of entry is what you're paying, the initial buffer, and then the ingredients cost the same amount in each one. The one beauty is once you've already paid the cost of entry at Wendy's, at Applebee's, at Carabas, all you have to do is say, can I have extra protein? The extra protein will typically cost you like $1.50 to $1.99, and you now get double the amount of protein. You already paid your cost of entry of the 16 bucks for your salad at Carabas, but for $1.50 more, you now divide that down into two meals, and you have two meals for $9 a piece, or at Wendy's, you have two meals for $3.50 a piece, or whatever your different meal or preference is of where you go. So when you've already paid that cost of entry, you've already paid the ticket to get into Bush Gardens, like then at that point, to add the extra protein is minimal. So go ahead when you're eating at a restaurant, turn whatever you're going to have into two meals. You now took the total caloric value, even if it wasn't as healthy as something you could have made at home, you've cut it in half, but because you've added the protein, you've now made it a full meal. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's like a golden nugget. Like it's something I need to remember to say at every single seminar, but that is huge. So no matter where you go, if you're going for breakfast at a diner, if you're going any place, always ask for extra protein. It's like two bucks or less, no matter where you go. They like haven't figured out the price right. Eventually they'll catch up and get it. But even like McDonald's, $1.99, they will put a chicken, grilled chicken breast with a piece of lettuce and a slice of tomato in there in a little cardboard thing, hand it in to you as you go out the window. $1.99, like you can't beat that. So it might not be ideal as far as the source or you don't like how they treat their chickens or you don't like their hormones, but it's way better than eating nothing or it's way better than going to eat a Snickers bar, okay? So that is where the one time we're eating at a restaurant is beneficial, is you can make it cheaper, you can make it healthier, and you can make it still fit into your program, all right? We have two left. Dan, we'll call you, what's number seven? No fried food. Damn it, I hate that one. So Ian, your french fries just got, boom, kicked out the water. <laughs> so if we don't catch it on one level of the net, we'll catch it on the next one. So. Your mozzarella cheese sticks, oh man, cheese is healthy fat, oh it's fried, damn we got that. So somehow the rules catch the safety net, I think just about with every type of food. The fried food guys, obviously that should be pretty obvious. If you do not have an air fryer and you love fried foods, buy an air fryer because you can almost make the same exact things with that. You can use almond flour, yes. So like, let me give you an example. If you Please. Want mozzarella sticks from the store and you put them in the air fryer, is that good? No. Yes, if you make them on your own. So what you would do is go ahead and Sargento, whatever type of cheese that you get, roll them in almond, well, egg wash, then almond flour, and then put them in the air fryer, and they taste just as No, 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 no. But you can use coconut flakes, you can use coconut flour, you can use so many things to make a 